Hello and welcome again. Welcome to this sequence of videos on the Elgamal encryption scheme. So we're going to talk about uh, this uh, encryption uh, algorithm or scheme. Um, it would be a good idea that you already know uh, the Diffie-Hillman key exchange. So I, put, I will put up a link to the sequence of those videos because uh, understanding this Elgamal will require uh, for you to watch those videos first because we will actually go over some of those things that are there. So the Diffie-Hillman key exchange is a big part of this Elgamal encryption. It's actually derived from that. All right, so let's start with a little bit of history. So it was proposed by Tahir Elgamal. Uh, he was an Egyptian cryptographer. Uh, at the time, he was working at the Hewlett Packard lab in Stanford University when he wrote an article about the Elgamal encryption scheme and that article was called a public key crypto system and a signature scheme based on the discrete logarithms. Now remember that this is something we talked about. The discrete logarithms are related to the Diffie-Hillman key exchange and they are also related of course to the Elgamal uh, scheme. Uh, this was published in the Transactions on Information Theory uh, journal. Uh, one thing I have to mention also is that it was supported by the National Science Foundation, which is just a foundation of the U U.S. government. Um, so I had a little bit of a, a screenshot here from the first uh, page of the book and the abstract, as you can see here. Uh, it was in the Hiller Packer Labs where he was working when he actually wrote this this article. All right, so. Let's talk about what is all pr the process here that was uh, described in the in this uh, in this article. So the process of encryption decryption requires a Diffie-Hillman key exchange first. So that's why I said that it's important for you to review those videos before you actually come and see what this uh, Elgamal crypto system is. All right. So as you remember from uh, the Diffie-Hillman key exchange, uh, what you need. To what you want to do is you want to interchange a key for symmetric cryptography where the key for encryption decryption is exactly the same. So to do that, what you do is you publish uh, the public parameters who are a couple of numbers. The first number has to be a prime number, which should be large number. And the second number, which we call alpha, is the generator of CPU star. Now, so this is public, so this is accessible to anyone. So anyone with access to this could do a Diffie-Hellman key exchange uh, in this particular case. So let's say this is on a web server or something like that, or some web page. So what happens here, let's recall a little bit what the, the Diffie-Hellman is so before we start. So on the side of Alice, Alice is gonna uh, take a random number between two and P minus two. I'm not sure if you can actually see that a small thing over there, but it's a number between two and P minus two. Then she does a modular exponentiation to take this alpha to the number that she chose randomly, modulo p, and I will call that a. That number a is transmitted through the insecure channel, and Bob gets that number. Now Bob is going to do exactly the same thing. He's going to take a random number between 2 and p minus 2. He's going to take the alpha, which is public, take it to the, to the power that he chose over here, and that's all modulo p, modulo this prime here. And then he gets a number that we call capital B. That capital B goes all the way to Alice, to the insecure channel. Now Alice, what she can do is she can take this number b to the power that she chose, which is a. So that would be b to the a modulo p. That would give her some number k, capital K. And Bob can do exactly the same thing. He can take the message that she that he got from Alice A to the B power, which is the one that he knows, and that's gonna give you exactly the same number as K here. So this computation and this one are exactly the same. And remember, the reason this works is because of the Diffie-Hillman key exchange algorithm, something that we actually I actually prove in the in those videos. So so that's the first step, sort of of the. Uh, gamma, the Elgamal uh, scheme. Now we're gonna see a little bit later that this can be improved, that you don't have to actually do this kind of going back and forward like this, uh, sending messages like that if she wants to do the encryption. So, but for now, let's just do the simple thing. And the simple thing here for the Elgamal is you do the Diffie-Hillman key exchange first. 
so now both of them have the chair key and they only they know the chair key here k okay so only they know k so this k here remember is not, tra not transmitted through the insecure channel and cannot be computed unless you have a really good uh, way to compute discrete logs now suppose that now Alice wants to send the message to Bob so let's say Alice is here and she wants some to send some plain text let's call that plain text X as always so what Alice is gonna do so and this is the person process of encryption now which is the main part of the algorithm is that she's gonna encrypt the plain text using the chair key that they have modulo p so this is gonna be a multiplication now it is important here that the bit length of uh, x is less than or equal to the bit length of p so we can encrypt the x properly and this x p x should be an x c p star now if it's not like that if x is bigger what you want to do is what you actually have to do it in blocks uh, and you have to do padding if this bit length is not as a multiple of p so but that's not what we're going to concern about now so we're just going to assume for the moment that the plain text here x is uh, less than the bit length of p and the encryption is actually very simple well, the only thing that you do is to get the cipher text what alice has to do is has she has to do a modular multiplication it takes the plain text and multiply it by the shared key which we call that the multiplicative mask it's just a fancy name just to say that you're going to multiply by by the key this is the shared key that they have and this is all an operation of course is modulo p so once she computes this y here by modular multiplication what she does is just she just sends that message through the insecure channel uh, to bob so x was the plain text y was the cipher text and then what she does is multiplies the plain text by the uh chair key modulo p and then, then she sends that message through the insecure channel and then bob gets it so that's pretty much the uh the 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 idea of the elgamo now this can be improved a little bit uh better uh with this idea so this idea will be the elgamo protocol and we're going to distinguish in this case three phases which is a kind of like a simplification of what we did here uh, let me scroll back all the way up here so the first thing we did we did it kind of like a key exchange first the Diffie Hillman key exchange and then Alice did the encryption multiplying the key the shared key by the uh, plain text to get the cipher text now the idea this essence of the idea is going to be the same but this process is going to can be simplified a little bit in the following way so we're going to call this the Elgamal protocol and there are three phases to that protocol the first phase will be the setup phase and the setup phase is done by Bob so this is done by the party interested in receiving messages so if you want to use Elgamal and you are interested in receiving messages this is the work that you have to do you have to set it up so you somebody can send you secret messages so how is the setup here for for Bob so we'll do, do that in a second the second part will be the encryption phase which is the one that is done by Alice so Alice has to do this encryption phase and the decryption phase of course has to be done by Bob the person who received the messages all right so let's go into the details of that now phase one that I described here is done only once so Bob does the setup only one time and he published those the setup uh, publicly for everyone to see phases two and three are executed every time a message is sent so every time you s the Alice sends a message she has to do this number two and Bob has to do number three now number one is done only once and that is on the side of the receiver of the receiver of the secret messages all right so let's just actually go now into the details of what is the setup phase for and which is done by Bob so in this case Bob is going to choose a large prime P which is at least 1024 bits now remember in the Diffie Hillman key exchange this is something that either party could do uh, or a third party could do choose the public parameters 
but in this case, uh, for the Elgamal crypto system of the Elgamal scheme, uh, the receiver is the one that's gonna do this setup. So Bob is gonna choose a, prime, a large prime. I said, as I said, 10, 24 bits at least. Bob is gonna choose also alpha and ZP star, which remember this has to be a generator of ZP star. And Bob chooses a random number B between two and P minus two. If you look at these things that I have here, this is exactly very the same as the Diffie-Hillman key exchange, exactly the same. Now this part that is B, if you remember the Diffie-Hillman key exchange, this is the private key for Bob. So this B here is the private key for Bob. So now Bob, what he gonna, this is gonna do is he's gonna compute the generator to the random number that he chose from two to P minus two, and then he does that all modulo P. And this is the public key for Bob. Now this process that you see here is done by Bob only once. So once he does that, he takes that public key, that's why we call it K sub pub, which is public key, which is a triple, so three numbers. The first number is the prime number. The second number will be the generator of CP star. And this capital B that you see here is this modular exponentiation that you see over there. And again, this is done only once. So Bob takes this and publishes this in the server or some web page or something like that. And then what he has to do is has to keep B secret. So B is not published. B is something that Bob keeps it for himself. The only thing that is published is P alpha M capital B. As I describe here in the picture. So Bob has those, does all this computation here. He goes and publish this P alpha and B prime number generator and that module exponentiation that you saw earlier. And just to emphasize once more, uh, the Bob sets this up only once. So that's it, he's done. If you wanna receive messages, this is what you do, you do it only one time. Oh no, now what is the encryption phase? The encryption phase is gonna be done by Alice, which is in the person interested or the entity interested in sending the messages, the secret messages. So let's say X here, as always, is gonna be the plain text that Alice wants, Alice wants to send to Bob. So what Alice does is, she's also gonna do kind of similar to the Diffie-Hillman key exchange. She's gonna choose a random number between two and P minus two. And Alice is gonna compute something that's called the ephemeral key, which is just a fancy name to say that I'm gonna take the public alpha take it to this random number here, and this is our modulo key. This is called ephemeral key. And the reason it's called like that is because every time uh, Alice wants to send a message, this key will be different. So it's something like, it's a temporary key, let's call it like that. So it's temporary only. It's only temporary, and it only makes will make sense for this uh, choice here of random number. And this random number A, she has to choose a random number for every single time she wants to send a plain text, she wants to encrypt the plain text. So that's the ephemeral key. Now Ali is gonna compute the shared key, which she knows how to compute it because she chose a number A here, and that's gonna be K, that is gonna be B to the A modulo P. So that's the shared key. And that's how she does the encryption. Remember, uh, we saw it at the beginning of the of the video. So what she does is she takes the plain text, multiply it by the share key, and this is all modulo P. That's how she gets this uh, uh, cipher text here, Y. Now, I'm gonna emphasize this because it's important. If Alice wants to send several messages, then she should choose a random number between two and P minus two for all the messages, one for each, you, preferably different for every message. I mean, random in this case, a random for every message. So let me let me just give you a picture here. So let's say I have, uh, this is what happens here. So then um, Alice, I don't know if you can see this, it's a little bit small, but that's exactly, that letters that are there are exactly the ones that are here. Uh, this one, this is what Alice does in the side of Alice. So Alice is gonna send through the insecure channel, she's gonna send the ephemeral key and the cipher text. Now she has to send this uh, because she um, 
needs to tell Bob what kind of chair key they're gonna use. You see Bob here, they didn't agree on a chair key yet. They Bob just made this public, so they didn't uh, share a key per se, as we saw in the first part of the video. They don't do it in this scheme, and the reason for that is because this saves some steps. So they don't have to share the key at the beginning. The only thing that she, she has to do is she has to send like this ephemeral key from which you can get the chair key, which is um, what um, she does for encryption, and then Bob is going to use that key for decryption too. So she's going to send that thing, and uh, this here is usually twice as long as the plain text because uh, this uh, key here usually have half of the bits, sort of, of the prime P and Y will be something like that. So about double, um, not exactly double, but about double of the plain text. So that gets sent through the channel and Bob gets this here. So that would be the process of encryption. Now, once Bob gets this kind of thing here, what he will have to do is he will have to compute the share key to be able to decrypt that message Y that I was sent to the insecure channel. As I mentioned earlier here, and this is important also, every time Alice tries to send a message, let's say the, the messages are X1, X2 through Xn, she has to compute, of course, uh, the number of ciphertext that she has to encrypt. And for every for every plain text, she has to choose a random number, A1. So for example, for the first plain text, she's gonna choose A1 and produce a ciphertext Y1. For the second plain text, she's gonna choose another random, generate, random number generator here between two and P minus two to produce another cipher test Y2, and so on. Now, it will not, it, this is not a good idea if she wants to send tons of messages to use the same random number. Uh, that's because it makes it easier for the attacker to get uh, to decrypt the messages. So she is advised that she actually does choose for every message that, message that she wants to send a random number here. This is what I have here. So this, these ephemeral keys that she sends were be different in general every time she sends a secret message. So if she wants to send n secret messages, then this is gonna be exactly the things that are gonna be going through the channel to Bob. Now Bob, the only thing he has to worry about is he has just to compute the key with the corresponding ephemeral key that he gets here. Just to emphasize that that's important. And the third step, which is the decryption phase, which is what the part that Bob does, is let's look at the details here. So Bob is gonna get the this through the channel, which is the ephemeral key and the cipher text. That's gonna be from Alice. Now remember, but Bob has his secret key B, who he and he doesn't share this with anyone. That's what he's gonna use to compute the chair key, which is K, which is key, the ephemeral key to the B modular P. And the reason they get the same K is because they are basically doing a Diffie-Hellman key exchange here. It's just that Alice is choosing that exponent randomly between two and P minus two every time she actually wants to send a message. So now in this case, so Bob will compute the cherry key K and now she, he can actually decrypt the message very easily. Just take the ciphertext and multiply by the inverse of K modulo P and when he does this computation, he's going to get back, of course, at the plain text X. So that's pretty much um, how the uh, Elgamal crypto system works. And so basically inside the Elgamal uh, scheme, uh, there is this uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange. In this kind of protocol, the one that we just saw here, uh, is a it saves a little bit of time because Bob does the setup first and then they don't have to go back and forth sending things. And so Alice is the one that has to send uh, the messages only one time uh, for to do the uh, the encryption with Elgamal. So, um, so that's pretty much the idea of the Elgamal scheme. What I'm gonna do in the next video is uh, give you an example of this with concrete numbers, and I will show you exactly how this works. So this was all very theoretical, 
all this part. I hope this was clear. So I will stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.